In this video, we're going to add a lip and groove to our plastic housing in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to add a lip and groove or an interface between the upper and lower housings. Before I get started, I want to make sure that I rename the bottom housing. One thing you'll note is that when we add features or we modify geometry, then a lot of times the bodies will get renamed. So we want to just pay attention to the body names. Uh, so for example, if you're using a combine, the target is going to maintain the name and the tool bodies are going to be uh, wiped out, or at least their names will be gone. So if you make those selections and you're combining things, and you just want to make sure that you do keep track of those names. The thing that we want to do now is we want to create what's called a lip and groove. So whenever we have plastic parts, what we need to be mindful of is the interface between them. So for this example, I'm going to hide all the electronics on the inside because they won't matter. But what we want to do is we want to talk about ways in which we can combine or create a feature that will positively locate these two in relation to each other. A lot of times when you have plastic parts, you'll see a slight gap on the outside, and that's called a reveal. And the reason that we have these reveals is because oftentimes it's really difficult to get a consistent or an accurate uh, precision fit between multiple plastic pieces. So putting a little bit of a gap there in that reveal uh, helps us sort of just hide those inconsistencies. Also, as we rotate this around, sometimes you'll note that there'll be some uh, potential issues on surfaces on the inside. You can see a graphic in there. So these are things that we, we do want to inspect when we're done. We want to make sure that we have good, clean geometry. And if we have to, we might need to go back and sort of work or fix some interior faces. Now, this is not a problem that is unique to Fusion 360. It really just depends on the geometry that you're creating and how you're designing your parts. So I will admit that this housing became a little bit more complex than I had intended originally. I simply just wanted to show how to create a basic plastic part, something that we can injection mold. And I got a little carried away with adding slight curvature here and rounding things off there, but that is part of the process. That is something that does tend to happen. So for this example, in this video, we're gonna focus on just the creating the groove between the two bodies. So we're gonna start with a sketch. I'm gonna pick my right plane or YZ plane. We've already sliced through, but one thing that we wanna do is we wanna intersect some of this geometry. So I'm gonna to go to create. I'm gonna go down to project include and intersect. And in this case, I'm gonna select bodies instead of selecting individual entities. And I'm going to bring both bodies in. So what this does is it gives me a reference for where the inside edge is, where the outside edge is, and I have a midpoint along that edge. When we're creating these lip and grooves, we have to be careful that it's not an exact fit. We do need a little bit of gap. And we also want to be mindful of how thick or thin features are. So we need to decide where the groove is going to be. And in this case, I think I'm going to put the, uh, the reveal on the top and then we'll figure out where the groove needs to be. So I'm just gonna start by using my line tool and I'm gonna put a line up here and I'm gonna simply bring this back a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, keeping in mind that we don't want lines to be vertical. We, we need to have draft and we need to plan for the direction of that draft. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit and then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna stop there for now. So I'm gonna hide the housings to make it a little bit easier to see. That way we're not looking at a blue line over that sort of teal. So I'm gonna hit escape to get off my line tool and make sure that these are hidden. And then we wanna make sure we understand this. So by default, it put in a tangent relationship. This doesn't need to be tangent, so I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna make that edge horizontal. That one's fine to be horizontal because it is going to be normal to the direction of pull. Next, we need to remember that we have two millimeter wall thickness. So we're gonna put the middle of this right in the middle of the design. So I'm gonna have something right at one millimeter. I'm gonna take a line, I'm gonna find the midpoint, and I'm just gonna draw a vertical line for right now. That's just a placeholder. We might use it, we might not, I don't know. But that just kind of helps us visually see where the middle is. So we've got this horizontal line. This is gonna be our reveal, which typically is gonna be just on one side. And then we need to have a, a recess in one portion, and then we need to have additional material on another. Now, if we do this with just an angled line, 
One thing you'll note is if we do a cutout from the bottom, then what we're going to end up getting is something that can be drafted or pulled very easily. When we add material to this top piece, we also want to make sure that it's in the direction of pull. So we can figure out how big we want that reveal to be, and then we need to decide how tall the rest of this needs to be and the angle it needs to be at. So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard, and I'm just going to say D for draft. And that's going to put that two degrees on there for me. So now I already know that that's two degrees. We know that our housing is two millimeters thick. Each of these is going to be one millimeter wide. So I'm going to give a dimension value here, and I'm going to set that to one millimeter, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make that equal to this value. Now I need to stick this right in the middle, so I'm going to hit Escape, and I'm just going to simply select it, and then I'm going to select that point. I'm going to make them coincident. This vertical edge here needs to be construction because it's not going to be part of our selection. So right now what we've done is we're going to create a cutaway from the bottom piece, and we're going to add this portion to the top piece, and that's going to be an exact fit. As I said, we don't want it to be exact because that's going to cause problems. We want a little bit of a gap. So this intersection here, this horizontal line, that's fine. That's perfect. We can have them match there, and that'll help us control the squish or the thickness between the parts. But we want to make sure that we offset this line. We want to make sure that we offset this cut a little bit. So I'm going to do that by going to my line tool. I'm going to carry this over, and I'm going to come up just to that horizontal there. And then I need to remember that this section, this extra piece here, this is going to be the cutout from the bottom. So I need to make sure I have a complete closed profile. So I'm going to escape on the keyboard. I'm going to make sure that these two uh, edges are parallel. So I maintain that two degrees. And then I'm going to use D to just give them a small distance here. I'm going to say 0.05, half a millimeter, and that'll be more than enough. You'll notice that this bottom line is underdefined. So I need to make sure that it's horizontal, and that'll fully define that section for us. Now, we want to be sure that we can select that as a profile. So that looks good. That's going to be the cutout from the bottom. That'll be perfectly fine. And we also need to think about the piece that's getting added to the top. So again, that is the top. This is the piece that's added. All the rest of this is going to stay here. This lip is getting added. The rest of this is going to stay here. It's just a close profile for right now, but we can turn that to construction, and now we can't select it. So really what we're doing is we're adding that bit. But we still do need that reveal. We need a little bit of a gap between the pieces because we know they're not going to fit perfectly. We can decide if we want this to be on one side or both sides. Because of the draft, we can uh, make this very easy on ourselves, and we can do it on both sides. So remember, this line is going to be the part that's getting removed from the bottom. So we can carry this over horizontally, and I'm just going to extend it out past the housing, D on the keyboard, and I'm just going to give this, uh, let's say 0.05, half a millimeter, and uh, or actually, sorry, 0.05 of a millimeter, not half a millimeter. So very small gap here, not very big, because remember, this piece right here, these are going to be the two intersecting points. But I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to do it from the top, from this edge here, and I'm going to come all the way out horizontally, and again, dimension, and I'm going to give it the same. Again, we want to control these with as few dimensions as possible. And uh, so here, this is going to be cut from both pieces. This little section here is going to be from the bottom, including this. All that's going to get cut away. And then this section here is going to be cut away from the top, but this section is going to be added. So again, we just need to be mindful of these things. So now we have all of the profiles that we need to make this work. I'm going to finish the sketch, and we're going to focus on just the bottom housing for right now because all of that gets cut away. So we're going to bring back the bottom housing. We can turn off our section analysis. We don't need to see it right now. And what I'm going to do is create a sweep. So under Create, we're going to select Sweep, and we need to select our profile. So the profile can be a little tricky, so we have to hold down the left mouse button, select that profile, this profile, and this one here. Those are all the things that are going to get cut away. Then for our path, we're just going to select the entire outside edge, let it go all the way around, and then we're going to say OK. Now, you'll notice what happens here is the preview showed a little sliver. But once it's done, you'll notice that there is no extra geometry here. If we view this from the top, what we should see is these inside walls. We should see that because we had two degrees of draft. We didn't affect anything else, so we don't have to worry about anything else. From the outside, 
we removed a small amount of material. So if we bring back the top housing, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there, but we haven't added that lip to the top yet. So that small gap is gonna be part of our reveal. Let's bring the top housing in that sketch and let's repeat this process. This time we have to cut away a little bit, but then we also have to add. So I'm gonna add first and then I'm gonna cut away after the fact. So once again, we're going to do a sweep. This is our profile. The path is going to be around the outside of the part. I'm going to, have to zoom out, select that, and we're joining these together. So again, if we look at this, you can see the path and profile. What we're doing is we're adding that. We'll join them together. It's only going to join to the visible body. And then we're going to repeat this process one more time. We're going to sweep and take that. And the path, again, is going to be that outside edge. I'm going to zoom out. I can select this. And we're cutting away. Objects to cut is only going to be this top body because it's the only one visible. If you have more visible, you do want to be mindful of what you're actually removing it from. Now I can hide that sketch. I can bring back the top and the bottom, and I can take a look at a section analysis. So what we should see here is that we've got a positive intersection on this face. This is the face that we're controlling between the two. This one intersects here, and that's where it's going to stop. We have this small reveal, which we could make smaller, we could make bigger, it just kind of depends on what you're doing. And then there's a small gap between these. And that's gonna be important because the plastic parts are never going to be perfect. Uh, you can get pretty close, especially with some, you know, some high production value micro molding, you can get details that are really fine and precise. But for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to have a small amount of gap in here. So again, if we take the section analysis off, what we did was we created that reveal around the outside, and now we've got that lip and that groove. So if we look at each part individually, if we look at the bottom, what we did is we created that groove. And if we take a look at the top housing by itself, we added a lip to it. Now, if we did everything right, we should have draft. So we should be able to still manufacture these. We didn't add any draft in the wrong direction because the outside as we're looking at it, is getting pulled from positive Z, if we look at our view cube. The inside is getting pulled from negative Z. So that's why we wanted it to draft the way it is, because all the stuff on the inside needs to be pulled that direction. Now, some things that we need to be mindful of or we need to consider that might affect the design. You'll notice that this inside edge appears to be drafted the wrong way. Now, if we take a look at our sketch, you can see that inside edge that we used, that inside edge was pulled the wrong direction, it was drafted the wrong direction, which means that when we added this geometry, we added a negative two degrees, which means that there's a small section in this housing that cannot be removed. This can be fixed by adding draft after the fact, or we can go back to our sketch and we can modify it. Now, if we modify it, we need to be very careful. And the reason we have to be careful is because we used this to remove material from the bottom. So if we add additional edges, we want to make sure that our profiles are selected properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another line here. And this line is going to be collinear with the inside edge. So that's going to keep that inside draft going this, the correct direction. I'm going to finish the sketch. And then I want to be I want to make sure I want to be 100% certain that everything is is done properly. So we didn't leave a little bit of material there, so that's still fine. But on the top side, we want to reselect the profile that we use to create that solid piece. So we're going to edit the feature. We're going to hold down Control or Command to deselect that, and then we're going to say OK. Now we can hide our sketch, and now that inside face is drafted the correct direction, which means that this little piece that we added is getting smaller as it goes away from the housing and it's not staying consistent. So this gives us the, the draft that we need to actually remove this from the housing. And we can check this by going to a bottom view. What we should see is that we can select this inside face and we can select this face here. That way, if we can see both of those faces, we know we have draft on them and we know we can pull them from that direction. So everything looks pretty good there. So, there are other things, obviously, that we can do, but this is the basic process for us to add the, the lip and the groove manually to our design. This is a critical step in an injection molded part, and if your design is more complicated than this, if you don't necessarily have a very good edge to select for a sweep, then you might need to do a little bit more manual work. 
If you decide to use something like an extrude, for example, you can just create a sketch on that top face and you can use an extrude that tapers down. You wanna be mindful of the fact that you're tapering in a, a certain direction, right? So if you're using the two degree draft like we are, make sure that you carry that two degrees so that you have a consistent wall that goes all the way down the outside. But I'm not gonna get into all of the nuances or all the different ways that we could do this. The sweep cut is probably the easiest. It allows us to use one sketch to control this so we can build in our reveal, all the different gaps that we need and the intersection between all these pieces. For now, I'm gonna turn off my section analysis. I'm gonna bring back my PCB and go back to a home view. If you have any questions, please let me know either by email or in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.